Hey there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Two Anatomy Geeks. I'm one anatomy geek, and here comes my other friend without our glasses. What's up, friend? Hi there, Dr. Osar. <laughs> today, no glass Tuesday. <laughs> today, we're going to, to, to be discussing the diaphragm. The diaphragm is an important muscle, as you know, for respiration, but it's also an important muscle for stability as well as our client's mobility. So Jill will start us out off talking about the anatomy, the attachments of the diaphragm. Then we'll go into the functional anatomy. What does the diaphragm really do as it relates to posture and movement? And then we'll demonstrate a corrective exercise, three-dimensional breathing for improving function of the diaphragm as part of the deep core system. Yeah, so the diaphragm muscle is kind of a tough one to kind of think about um, its attachments because it's not something that's easily palpable usually uh, in like when I'm teaching at massage therapy school it's not something that you can feel the length of or the fiber directions of very easily um, so I am using this as our sort of visuals to give you an idea about where that um, diaphragm attaches to so this is going to be the anterior portion the posterior oh, there you go and so the diaphragm um, it's a primary muscle for respiration or breathing and it actually creates a separation between our thoracic cavity and our abdominal cavity um, so it's going to have kind of like a, a round attachment uh, or circular attachment so this is going to represent the xiphoid process or the um, lower part of your uh, sternum and so it's going to attach on the inside of the xiphoid process then it's going to come around and it's going to be inserting or originating from the um, inside of the ribs like 7 through 12 so basically like from the midway point down on the inside of the ribs comes all the way around to the back and then it's going to um, attach to the now different literature says different things but about L1 through L2 vertebral body is bodies is where it's going to um, then also attach to. So from the inside of the xiphoid process, the inside of ribs 7 through 12, basically the last half, and then all the way back to the um, vertebral bodies of L1 through L2, and sometimes too you'll hear about like from some of the lower thoracic um, uh, uh, vertebral bodies. So then it's kind of like a trampoline in a way. So I'm going to have you turn this way, Dr. Osar. And when it is attaching at all these different places, so from front to sides to the vertebrae to the sides of the other ribs, it comes in and then it has this attachment or this insertion at what they call the common tendon, which is sort of a circular area. If you look at it, it kind of looks uh, kind of like less muscle tissue, more like a white, like a tendon. And then it all comes into this area. And normally when it's at rest, um, it is going to have more of a um, dome shape to it. And then when we um, are needing to take a breath in, it actually pulls down and becomes flatter and so that creates more space in your respiratory area so that air is forced in because of the change in pressure um, and then you take a breath in and when it relaxes and it goes back up to its dome shape that's going to help you to exhale awesome one thing about the diaphragm also is it has fascial attachments to the psoas transversus abdominis how the transverse abdominis fascia if you want to just turn and face this mm -hmm. way so the transverse abdominis is wrapping around into the thoracolumbar fascia here. Well, the diaphragm also has fascial attachments into that thoracolumbar fascia. So if you feel underneath your lowest rib, right about here, the diaphragm is, is inserting, originating, and, and or attaching, I should say, to the, as Jill said, said, the front of L1 and L2, vertebrae L1 and L2. It's also fascially attaching into that thoracolumbar fascia, which makes a diamond-type shape here in the low back. And that's where the transverse abdominis pulse taut. It also, as I mentioned, is fascially blending into the psoas and the deep erectors. So it has these fascial attachments to the stabilizers of the spine. So then as we look at the function of the diaphragm, we know that not only is it a muscle of respiration, it's also a muscle of stabilization. So in order to create the best level of stabilization, we have to breathe right. Now, one of the common things we'll see with our clients is we'll see them belly breathing. So I'm going to have Jill jump on the table here mm -hmm. and put your head down here, if you could, please. 
And what we're gonna see with our clients a lot of times is they're primarily belly breathing. So take a couple breaths into your abdomen here, and they're basically just breathing from their abdomen. Now, belly breathing in and of itself is not a problem. But if you look at our clients, especially as they get older, they start to breathe more and more from their abdomen because most of the times our older clients are compressed down like this. So the only place they can breathe is either up here and this way or down here this way into their belly. And that's a lot of times why you see so many older clients with a distended abdomen because they're overusing their abdominal wall, I should, should say overusing belly type breathing, which is a lower type breathing strategy. And they're not using their entire thoracal pelvic cylinder from the first rib, which is right here behind your collarbone, all the way down to the pelvic floor in the breathing process. So we wanna teach our clients how to create more optimal breathing, three-dimensional breathing, so that will be our corrective exercise for this video. So can I have you bend your knees for me, please? Okay. So we start out with our clients in hook lying position. Again, you can train breathing and you should train breathing in a variety of positions. This is the position we choose to use most frequently. I'm gonna have Jill place her hands upon her rib cage. So just below her chest, right on her rib cage. And what I want Jill to do is send her breath down towards her pelvis, but into her hands as well. Because three dimensional breathing, and that's why we call it three, three dimensional breathing and not belly breathing, is breathing top to bottom from the first rib, all the way down to the pelvis and the pelvic floor. It's breathing side to side. It's also breathing front to back. That's three-dimensional breathing. Belly breathing is not three-dimensional breathing. Most of our clients are good belly breathers. They're not good three-dimensional breathers. And that's why they will compromise their stability as well as their mobility. Because if you're not breathing into that entire cylinder from the first rib all the way down to the pelvis, you will start to get tight and stiff because you're not expanding the rib cage, you're not expanding the spine, you're not expanding the pelvis and the pelvic floor, you're not moving the diaphragm up and down inside the cylinder, as Jill described, as you breathe in, the diaphragm should move down the cylinder this direction towards the waist or towards the pelvis, and as you breathe out, the diaphragm will move back up towards that first rib or towards the head. So we need that three-dimensional three -dimensional activity of the diaphragm to properly respirate, of course, but then also to stabilize as well as mobilize the internal organs and mobilize the rib cage, spine, and pelvis. So give that a go. I'm gonna have Jill sit up and just show you one more time, breathing in the upright position. So Jill, just have a nice alignment, nice long spine, place your hands on your rib cage. Again, if your clients struggle with shoulder tightness, they can always wrap a strap around their rib cage as well. Send your breath into your hands. So she's breathing from her first rib all the way down towards her pelvic floor. She's breathing side to side into her hands as well as front to back. You wanna make sure your client can expand and breathe into the backside of the rib cage. Because if you do that, you can truly make a tremendous difference in your client's posture as well as their movement, as well as those clients that sort of mentioned that I have chronic tightness in my low back. This is the number one exercise, corrective exercise we give our clients. There's no exercise we give before we give the three-dimensional breathing strategy. Then we build that right into their core exercise patterns. So that way we're integrating their, the use of their abdominal wall and their core stabilizers along with three-dimensional breathing. So that's what we got for you today. To Anatomy Geeks, what are we coming back with next week? We're gonna talk about the rectus femoris. Awesome, so next week, tune in, same time, 12.15 Central Standard Time, right here at Fitness Education Seminars, or IIHFE, I should say, this is actually Fitness Education Seminars on Facebook. And again, if you're looking for more information to truly understand functional anatomy, biomechanics, motor control, and how this relates to the best assessments, corrective exercises, as well as functional movement progressions for the older adults, as well as the medical fitness populations, then check out the Integrative Corrective Exercise Instructor Program. We teach you all you need to know to be successful in working with these populations and really help you stand out in the industry. So you can go to IIHFE.com backslash certifications and we look forward to a training. We're gonna be in Reston, Virginia in less than four weeks and then Boston in less than eight weeks. There's payment plans available. So we look forward to seeing you there. Make it a great week, serve your clients and we'll see you next time.